Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of a layout here today, and I'm going to do what uh, I expect you will do as a one-to-one -one drawing, a full-scale drawing. I'm going to be doing as a one-to-five drawing. And so, first of all, this is the winder stair layout, and I'm going to begin, and essentially this represents, this paper represents uh, a four foot by four foot piece of particle board, or any smooth sort of surface like uh, MDF or whatever. And I'm going to represent here the outside of the winder stair with a long line here. And then I'll just take my T square and come square off of that. This just represents the outside wall of the winder like that. So I've got two lines that just represent the outside corner of the winder. And now I want to, um, I want to go and make a 900 wide stair and I'm going to be doing it at one to five you'll be doing it at one to one so here's my so that's 900 there and then I'll come 900 off of this one right there and I'll just finish off those lines That's going to be somewhere around here, like that, and then I'll square off for the other one. So up like that, and you probably won't fit quite this much onto your layout, so don't worry if you don't get all past the outside of the, you know, the, the flight coming down and the flight coming up. Don't worry too much about that. We're just really concerned about this corner here. So the parameters for this stair are that the width is 900, which I have here and have here. The unit run will be 275. And so to calculate our offset, we'll take the 275, multiply by 12 because we're doing uh, 30 degree winders. And then we'll divide by two times pi, which is 6.2832. Two seven five times twelve equals divided by six point two eight three two, and that leaves us with five hundred and twenty five point two. And from that, we will subtract our walking line of four fifty. That leaves us with uh, seventy five point two. So what that means is, on the inside corner here of the stair, I'll lay out a point. And I'll do it at one to five. You'll do it at one to one, which is 75 millimeters. So here on the scale ruler, I have 50. There's 100, so halfway in between here. And then 75 in the other direction. There's 75 there. And I'll just extend those two lines so they intersect. there and right about there so that's my offset here uh, we can say that this is 75 okay and now the next thing I'm going to do is extend these riser lines out so the flight coming down, let's say that this is the top of the stair here. And we'll say this is the bottom. And so I'm just going to take this layout point here and extend it across. And if I go 275 up from there, right there, that would be my last tread. In fact, I'll go another 275. I have the room for it here. Right there, this will be my path of travel down. 
And now I can also draw in my other riser headed down this direction. And I'll draw a couple of risers in there at 275. Right about there. And probably at one to one, you won't have enough room on your paper to draw two of these in, but you might get one of them in. Well, and I'm running out of uh, room here on my table. Anyway, I think you get the idea. That belongs over there. Okay, the next step is my stair width is uh, 900. My offset is 975. So that's a total landing of 975. And so I'll just draw that in out here on the outside. Here to here is 975. And so th that's going to form my 30 degree triangle up this way. So uh, that little trick I showed you there last week, uh, when you take the tangent of 30 degrees, it comes up with that decimal place. If I just take that and multiply it by the width of the landing times 975, I'll end up with 563. And so again, at one to five, you'll be doing this at one to one, I will lay out 563 millimeters, right about there. And then all I have to do is connect the dots from my layout point here. In fact, I'll just put my pen on that point and come out here to that. And I should get a perfect 30 degree triangle there. And then the same thing the opposite way. I can take 563. Oops, better do it on the line there. 563 right about there. And then again, connect the dots from the layout point. Right there. That's looking good there. And then let's see, let's do a nosing of 25 and a riser of 13. So, uh, for example, uh, if I was to draw in this last riser here, I would go 25 back, 10, 25 right there, and then an additional 13. Kind of hard to draw at 1 to 5 at... Uh, at one to one, it should be no problem for you. And I think what I'll do is I'll just do a dashed line here. So you can see that it's actually the nosing line. And then I'll do the back of the riser here as well. As I'm doing this, I'm just actually thinking to myself, there's no reason why you couldn't do a one to five scale layout at home instead of doing that in shop class. I think we could probably save ourselves a little bit of time, as it turns out. And then you could do it in the leisure of your of your living room. So another 25 right here and then 13 roughly there. 10, 25 and 13. So understand that uh, the riser lines, nosing lines are going to be parallel to the end of the tread, not they don't emanate from the layout point they're completely separate from that. And I think you saw that in shop. If 
probably could have used a different color of pen too. But anyway, I'm just doing the dashes here so you can see the difference. And the reason that I'm drawing these dashes or this nosing and riser on this side of the tread line is the fact that this is the travel. And so because I labeled this as top and this is down, obviously, I have to make sure that I put my riser on the right side of the line. If you don't label your drawing with the top, then I wouldn't know if you know what you're doing.